This podcast is meant for mature audiences only and contains strong sexual language. This is the Black and Kinky Lifestyle. With the bar and the bell. All right. Thanks for tuning in. Welcome to the Black and Kinky Podcast, where we talk about, I'm sorry, the Black and Kinky Lifestyle part podcast, my bad, where we talk about the lifestyle um, from the uh, from the perspective of a black couple. This episode, we got a lot to talk about. What we're going to do uh, is talk mainly about um, the signs that you might be ready for the lifestyle. Now, uh, there's a number of reasons why we, we talk about this a lot on the podcast. Me and Bella had actually debated on whether or not we've had this topic I felt before. Like we already had this episode, but we, we, we haven't talked about it quite like this. Mm-hmm. Um, and honestly, you know what? If we repeat a topic every now and again, we're repeating it with new eyes. I mean, we've only been in this lifestyle for so long. That's true. So it's like now, now I have a different perspective. Like I'm a different lifestyler than I was a year ago. Well, of course. You were barely a lifestyler a year ago. That's true. <laughs> I didn't. I barely knew what a lifestyler was. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're going to talk about you know the signs that you might be ready for the lifestyle. But but before we get into that, uh, we want to talk about the experience we had at a meet and greet, um, and also you know we'll talk about our hit list from the uh, that this is us show. Um, it comes on NBC, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then we have a sticky pages. Actually, our sticky... We, I was kind of concerned about this episode because I didn't think we would have a sticky pages because we just... We've be just been a little bit less active, mm-hmm. I think. We've been going to a lot more meet and greets than... Well, um, and like it was the holidays and like we had taken a break and... So, yeah. So, I don't think it's necessarily been less active, but it's just a matter of getting back into the groove. Yes, and we certainly did get back into the groove last night. <laughs> uh, yeah, we woke up real late this morning because we, 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 we got our groove but back. But we actually came home, like, reasonably early. Did we? we? Yeah, we oh, were you like 2.30. You you know but you know why that you know why that was why? because we didn't really go out to eat after I know. so we've we've cut that out of our lifestyle um, routine mm-hmm. we just come straight home yeah so so that'll be the episode for today so let's um let's actually get started with the hit list yes hit list, hit list. Hit list bitches in this episode we focused on this is us so this is us is a great family drama air it airs on nbc i think they're on like their third or fourth season i, I don't remember. know they confuse me because they do these like mid-season breaks so i'd be confused as Yo, to what season we're in when the hell did the mid-season break become a thing the first time i heard of the mid-season break was during like the walking dead was like the first show to yeah. do that for me i don't know i don't know i guess they figured like they saw the viewership would be down during the holidays because you know people are doing other shit they with their families supposed to be spending time so then like over that winter time i think they would take a break yeah and then come back in the spring mm-hmm. and then you know it's finished by summer and then you got your summer shows right right i just i guess when i was younger i don't remember shows like doing this doing mid-season shit, shit like it's uh, it's it's season one <laughs> and then fuck it like when you start the show again in the spring that's season two there's yeah. no fucking mid seat like come on man <laughs> um so anyway uh show on nbc um for those of you who don't watch it check it out it's actually a really decent show um but basically it's, it's about emotional. yeah very emotional show basically about a family um of so just a family with triplets um and one of the triplets is actually adopted and it sort of follows them the story follows them throughout the past present and future and you know it's it's just a you know there's there's nothing inherently special about these characters that makes them unique from any other character um in your life but it's just a very well told story and uh mandy moore it it stars mandy moore and a few other actors 
Um, Mandy Moore just floors me on this show, though. Like, mm -hmm. y you couldn't tell me 10 years ago that this chick would be, like, somebody to take seriously. I mean, this fir <laughs> her first single was called Candy, I think. I mean, but she was in A Walk to Remember, and that was that was a decent teen sad drama. That was, like, the beginnings of her acting career. When did that movie come out? I never heard of that one. A Walk to Remember? Yeah. I don't know. It was, like, early 2000s. Oh wow! Okay, mm -hmm. early two thousand. Yeah, that's yeah. that's about the time she came out with her yeah. single. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, so she was already a movie star. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, she had her act. Okay, all right. This is the first time I saw her act. So. Oh yeah, no, I love to watch to remember. Like oh, okay. you, like I don't usually remember movies, but I remember that one. So, um, so anyway, check out the sh show, but This Is Us has a cast of very attractive characters, so we decided that we were going to mm -hmm. talk about who we'd like to fuck from This Is Us. So why don't you go first? Well, I think a young Mandy Moore, because like, the show has multiple timelines, right? So, Not so, Mandy Moore when she first came out with her single when she was like no, 17. No, no, like her <laughs> character in the show, her younger character. Right. To get it. Of course, Randall and Beth can get it. Mm hmm. So his name is Sterling Brown. Yeah, Sterling Brown yeah. is very sexy. He was also in Black Panther. Yeah. Yeah, small role in Black Panther. He was also in the new Predator film, which was awful. It wasn't that bad. It was entertaining. Worst Predator movie. <laughs> well, outside of AVP, like Requiem, it was probably the worst Predator movie ever made. But yeah, but his wife, Beth, who was played by... Uh, I think... Oh, Susan Watson. Oh, yeah, Susan Watson. I like her, too. So, Susan Watson Susan Watson and I are the same age, and we were. she was born in Brooklyn. She's a Brooklyn-born girl. Oh, okay. <laughs> Um, oh, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't realize she was that young. Yeah, 1981. Mm -hmm. her, her character on the show seems more mature. But on the show, I think they're about your age. Yeah, which really makes me sad. <laughs> <laughs> that really makes me sad. Because I, I see them as like, like older yeah yeah <laughs> you know it's, uh -huh. it's kind of fucked up man you look at somebody like oh they, they're older and you find out damn it happens to me all the time yeah, yeah. i found out i'm older than them and shit <laughs> but yeah and then the brother the what's the brother's name oh i you're talking about the dude that the 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 nanny the, the nanny the manny yeah he the, played the, the, his the show nanny. on the show he played in was the man manny and the girl that he's messing with now. Now that now she's on my hit list all the way. That is Beth's cousin. Yeah, I'm gonna. Um, so his name is Justin Hartley. Yeah. Um, What's his name on the show? Uh, his name on the show is Kevin. Kevin, yes. So, but the 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 girl's name, um, her name is Melanie Liberd. I want to say Liberd, maybe. So she's actually a British actress. Oh. And you probably didn't know this, but she was actually on an episode of Game of Thrones. What episode? She was on the sixth season. So it was a very brief moment in the show, but I, they were, um, it was just a montage, not a montage scene, but a B-roll scene mm -hmm. where she played one of the priestess. So she's a oh. red priestess in the oh. Game of Thrones universe. Oh. That's yeah. Interesting. So, I can't wait for that to come back. But yeah, I'm honestly, cannot wait. We might have a brand new hit list because they'd be just popping up with different characters on the show. But did you see the new cast for the prequel? No. It's there was a, a cast? Black, yeah. There's a whole, it's like three black characters. Are you serious? Yeah. Oh, shit. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm in there. <laughs> I'm going to check that out on YouTube. Um, So I think you pretty much named all the people on my hit list. Yeah, I had... um. Yeah, I had Susan Watson, Mandy Moore, and uh, Melanie Leibert. Uh, oh, and Jack could get it. Jack? Yes. Oh. M Milo Vitu. Mm -hmm. I can't pronounce people's names. Uh, it's Milo Ventimig. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah. Ventimig. <laughs> <laughs> Ventimiglia. Ventimiglia? Ventimig. Okay. Sounds like Milo a, V. Sounds like a body part. <laughs> That can't be how you pronounce it. 
I like Milo V too. He's sexy. Okay, Milo V. Hair. Yeah, he's cool. You, you, so you feeling that mustache? Yeah, it's like a vintage vibe kind of thing. <laughs> wow. Okay, just look up these folks. We'll have their names in the <laughs> show notes if you don't know who we're talking about. All right. Okay, so I think that does it for the hit list. Hit list uh, if you watch This Is Us, uh, send us your emails on who you'd like to bang from the show. Uh, if there is a hit list you'd like us to do, please also send us that. What have we forgotten um, as far as those celebrities and even those fictional characters we would love to play with? Mm-hmm. All right, so let's move on. Um, so... Let's uh, talk about some of the questions we got. So there were two questions I want to focus on. Um, and thank you for uh, emailing us your questions. Um, you could also tweet us the questions. We got some questions t- uh, tweeted to us. Those, those are fine, too. Um, we're also on blackswingersclub.com, which is a swinger site for black folks. Um, we Yeah. Um, <laughs> Although we don't we don't talk about it very much, we're just on there. Um, uh, but you can send us a message there too. Um, but there, so we got questions from there. We got one question from there and one from Twitter. So I'm just gonna uh, uh, read the one we got. We got from, a question on Black Swingers Club. Yeah, we got a question Uh-oh, on Black Swingers. We be girl people be reaching out now. Serious, mm-hmm. can barely keep up. All right. So the question from Black Swingers Club, and I, and so you you didn't hear this question yet. No. So, but I think this is this is a simple one, but one that we haven't been asked about. Um, and I just I just thought it was one worthy of discussing. So the question was, what if your partner is not as enthusiastic? Is it just to wait until they come around? That was the question. Very brief, but. Uh, I think the and and it, it it has a lot to do with the episode today, um, but the question is, yeah, you really want to get into the lifestyle, but your partner is just like, uh, I don't know, um, or they're just not excited about it. But it's the second part of the question that really resonated for me. Is it just a a, a question of waiting them out? What do you got to say about that? Well, my first question would be. What's the hesitation? So I think you, and not saying that like they should be gung ho, but I think it's really about understanding why they may not be comfortable or feel open to the idea. Because there may be some other things going on there that is the reason that they're not warming up to it. Whether they don't feel comfortable you know, being with other people, um, if they feel like because you're so interested that, you know, you don't want to be with them or, you know, just like, what is it? I think it's really about at that point, you know, you really have to have a conversation about why you're interested in the lifestyle and why they're not. Um, Because if you're not on the same page there, that that's going to cause problems you know, all, all the way through. Um, cause you have to be on the same page. And so I don't think it's a situation where you just sit and wait. Like, I, I think you have to really be active about it and it's not active as pushing them towards being in the lifestyle. I think it's active about communicating, um, w- your needs in the relationship. Yeah. Yeah. I don't even have much to add to that um because that was my first reaction uh one like where's your enthusiasm coming from be honest about that and two what exactly is she or he less enthusiastic about Mm -hmm. you know um is it their comfort level with another partner or is it just their comfort level with you and another partner you guys gotta you know you guys gotta talk um so i mean i would i would want more information from this couple um but i think you you nailed it on the head um i do want to make it clear that um sometimes it's sometimes it's about time yeah 
and sometimes it has nothing to do with time. Sometimes right. time can make folks more uncomfortable with it. So mm-hmm. it's not a waiting game for some people. Um, time can change people in very unpredictable ways. Um, you can find yourself comfortable with something in the lifestyle now, and then you know a year later you find out, you know what, I don't want to do that shit anymore. Um, so, so yeah, so not, so not much to add to that. I'll move on to the next question. Thank you for your question on, um, on, on hitting us up on, um, blackswingerclub.com. Uh, please, uh, you know, look, we're, we're on there. Just look for black and kinky lifestyle. Um, and you'll find us without a problem. Um, so the question from Twitter. So this was one that was interesting. So this was sent to us from a couple in Europe, mm-hmm. uh, so shout out to the folks in Europe. Shout out to the folks in Sweden. Shout out to our international listeners. Yes. Um, we found out there was, yeah, South Africa was our, was one of our bigger listeners. Mm-hmm. Um, so on Twitter, somebody tweeted us an interesting question. So uh, what is your opinion on the term BBC, a.k.a. Big Black Cock, um, and blacked, right? So there, so there are these terms that people use specifically um, that uh, uh, that are there to identify a black, you know, sexual partner. Um, do we find these concepts offensive? So I think we talked a little bit about this after on our Bliss Cruise review. Um, but what was uh, what was your immediate reaction to this question, Bill? I think that context is important. Mm-hmm. I think context is uh, very important. Um, and like Crystal says on the read, words mean things. Mm-hmm. And when a white couple um, or a white individual or a non-black couple is referring to a black, and it's typically a, a black male. Um, oh, yeah. You know, when these terms are being used, um, I would throw a uh, black bull or black bull, bull in there. I really hate well. that one. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. it, 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 I'm offended. Mm-hmm. I'm offended. Like, when we were on, and we talked about this, but when we were on the cruise, you know, there wasn't a meetup for black couples, but there was a BBC meetup. And the majority of people that were there were black men and white women or white couples. Yeah. And I don't like the the fetis fetis fetization. Yeah, I don't like the fetization of it. I don't like and I don't like the reduction of an individual to their genitalia. Or to their stereotype. Or or to to a stereotype Mm -hmm. about them or that it's only about their sexual prowess. Right. Which is a stereotype. Well, which is a stereotype of black men and black women Mm -hmm. is that we're hypersexual. We're very promiscuous. Mm -hmm. um, You know, these are lies that have been fed Mm -hmm. to people to promote um, discrimination and racism. And so although those terms have now, you know, found themselves um, in different contexts when they're, you know, being used by certain groups, it just it it has a stain to me. Now, if I'm talking about your big black cock, I feel like that's different. Right. Um, But when it's only, you know, in reference, you know to a non-minority wanting a big black cock or wanting to be taken down by a black bull like that don't i don't like it so so yeah so it's so i think yeah i agree with you in and in, in and around the concept of like just being reduced to this thing um now this reminds me of an episode i'm going to do at some point um where I talk about when it comes to not being racist, it's the same thing. Not being a racist is somewhat synonymous with just not being an asshole. Um, so sometimes it just boils down to that. Um, and so when people, you know, hear the term and let's talk about terms like BBC and Black Bull, you know, there are some people listening to this and they're sort of thinking, well, what's wrong with that, right? Uh, and I think you're, you're right, context does matter. Um, but the thing is that 
when you are meeting someone, you have to understand that they are people. They right. are a person, okay? Maybe they have a big, big black cock. Maybe they will fuck your wife like a bull, but they are still a person. Right. And so it's sort of like, I mean, think back to when you, you started dating. Um, and I'm talking about, I'm talking to the guys here, and, and, and this, this might um, resonate with the women as well, although somewhat differently. Mm -hmm. So when you saw a chick, you know, maybe she was like in a library or maybe she was in a club and she had on this tight ass outfit, short skirt, legs smooth as fuck. <laughs> her titties are banging like cleavage just popping out of her shirt. Her hair's done um, and her ass is fat. And you're like, damn, like I, I want to fuck that girl. Like I, I want to have sexual intercourse with this person. <laughs> okay. Now, what's your approach going to be, though? You're going to walk up to that girl, and you're not going to tell her, yo, you got some big-ass titties, and you got a fat ass. I want to bend you over. I want to slide them panties to the side, and I want to smash you right at this motherfucking bar. Now, for 90% of women, maybe 99%, that's probably not going to be an approach that works. Right. Um, the thing is, it might still be in your head. But that's not the approach that works. You still have to get to know that person. Yes. At some point, you might actually get to split them cheeks, <laughs> right? <laughs> and then at that point, you could be like, God damn, girl, you got a fat ass. Your body is bad, right? At that point, it's okay. The context makes it okay. But in that initial in that initial interaction, you're not going to bring up all of that shit. No. The same applies to when you are, even if you have a black fetish, even if you you like Becky's, or even if you, um, if you even if you like red redheads, or even if you know me who likes milfs. You know, if I happen to meet a milf, I'm not going to talk about the fact or that she's a milf. A milf. Yeah. If you meet a black couple or a black guy, and you, you sort of you you want that BBC, um, I would suggest. Getting to know the person first. Right. You know, allow them to be human. Um, respect them as people. And then once you get, once you get comfortable with one another, um, then you can sort of start talking about, you know, some of the things you like. So if I'm talking to somebody for like an hour and we've shared, you know, things about ourselves and, you know... Um, uh, uh, and then I, I find out, you know, some of the things they like, they find out some of the things I like. And then at that point they say, okay, I really have to let you know, I, I, I'm really into black guys. Like I just, I, mm -hmm, I haven't mm -hmm. had sex with a black guy before and you seem really nice, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, in that case, I think it's okay, but don't start with that because yeah. when you do that, you really do, you're, you're not sort of allowing the person to just be themselves. You're not right. sort of respecting that. So at some point I'll have a whole episode on this, but I just wanted to just break it down to just not being a fucking asshole. You can be <laughs> a fan of BBCs, but don't reduce people to just being that. Right. Okay. Um, so I hope that answers our friend's question from Sweden. Um, Hopefully one day we'll take a trip out there and give you guys a ring. Yeah. All right. And we do play with white couples. I think that was part of the question. Oh my gosh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Um yeah, I hope people aren't getting the impression we don't play with white couples. Oh my gosh. Like we, we don't with we don't few. discriminate at all. No. I mean, if anything we like discriminate on is our attractiveness to you, but our attractiveness to you is not determined by your race. No, absolutely not. Actually, or ethnicity. Yeah. Um, actually, yeah, we went to a meet and greet the, uh, uh, what was it, a week ago? Mm -hmm. I want to say it was a week ago. We went to a meet, a gr meet and greet, um, and this was, it was really nice. Um, and yeah, there we happened to meet a, a white couple, um, and they were pretty hot. Mm -hmm. Like they they were they were pretty hot so so shout out to our white couple um, that <laughs> that we met in uh, and they were just uh, nice to talk to right right I mean the the f us going up to them actually had nothing to do with the fact that they were white and everything to do with the fact that they were actually sexy mm -hmm. so so yes we are discriminatory when it comes to sexiness yes <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right so um, Bell tell us about the meet and greet we went to. So this was a meet and greet. I don't know how we. 
end up find out about it. Anyway, um, some other friends of ours were going to it, um, so we thought we would show up as well. And what we found is that we really like meet and greets now. Um, it's a no-pressure environment. You get to talk to a lot of sub sexy couples, and it just gives you more time to, uh, I think, engage with people, you know, learn about them, that kind of thing. Um, so, yeah, we had a nice little sexy group at the meet and greet. We met a number of couples. Yeah, um, so we ran into our friends, the Jacksons. Mm -hmm. um, we ran into another couple friend of ours. Um, we actually met a, a, a couple. <laughs> this is interesting. We ran into a couple that... We hadn't met yet. We hadn't met, but, but we, we had heard them. To, yeah. We heard them on a podcast. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and it was just like, wow, uh, small world. Um, yeah. uh, it was actually quite an interesting podcast. I won't reveal what podcast it was because we haven't gotten their permission to do that. Um, but yeah, we met them and they were super sexy. So uh, we had our little brown table, mm -hmm. um, you know. And what we tend to do, and you can say whatever you want about it, but when we go to events, we try to make sure we talk to all the black people we can. Like, yeah. <laughs> all the black couples, we try to make sure we go up to. We prioritize talking to the black couples. Like we said, we'll talk to other couples as well, but we prioritize talking to the black couples because our community in the lifestyle is smaller, right? And so it, like... It, the community is smaller, which makes the barrier to entry greater. Um, and so we want to make sure that anybody who is at an event or, you know, at a party or something, they at least met one couple, an, you know, one other couple of color that they could feel like, okay, at least I, we weren't here on our own. You know, somebody talked to us mm -hmm. um, because the lifestyle can be cliquish um, yep. and it can be hard when you're only – you know, one of five couples at an event where there's, you know, 30 couples. Mm -hmm. um, so we want to make sure that everyone feels welcome, um, even if it's not our event, that they feel welcome, they feel comfortable, um, and that they know that there's another happy black face there. Anyway, so... <laughs> yeah, and so I'll just, uh, I wanted to just add to that, that sometimes... So, so not all black couples even need us, right, to, no. to greet them. And some black couples don't even end up hanging out with us after we've greeted them. Like sometimes, you know, there are those black couples that are literally like they don't, they don't really care about that. Which is that. fine. Yeah, which is totally okay. But there's some that I think appreciate that. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so go ahead. I'm sorry I interrupted you. No, it's okay. So we were going through this process and, and it was literally like looking around the room. Wait, have we talked to them yet? Have we talked to them yet? And so we see this couple um, that was there and I was like, okay, let's, you know, go talk to them. Um, and the they were separated at the time. So I think the female partner was, um, you know, at the bar or somebody, she was talking to somebody else, um, and the guy was standing there. And I think, Bummer, you're really good, <laughs> which I don't know if you're being, like, honest or, like, you have, like, these introduction lines, but you get, you caught, c catch people um, in a way that kind of lets their guard down. So you'd be like, hey don't don't I know you or like haven't I seen you somewhere or man like you know you you know I don't know I really like that that sweater or something like that oh yeah yeah I don't I don't remember exactly what I said to him but he he was wearing something and yeah um yeah that's so so what you're it's interesting that you're mentioning that because <laughs> <laughs> Because, like, I've read a lot of books just, like, on dating, on um, on connecting with people, and it's one skill I use. It's mm -hmm. sort of like, it's not just like, hey, how you doing? I haven't met you. You just sort of have to throw an interaction out there, th throw a question or statement out there that they have to respond to. Yeah. And that is not necessarily about getting to know you. So it could be like, yo, that shirt you're wearing, I know I've seen that shirt somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, did you buy that online or something? Because I've been looking for it. And they, they'll they answer that question, right? right? It's yeah. not like awkward. It's like, oh, this shirt right here. I know where I got this shirt. 
Um, and they could just start talking about the shirt. There's no pressure in getting to know them. They right. can talk about the shirt. It's their shirt. Um, it always so, throws me off because I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like a shirt like mm-hmm. do uh, you and then and then you'll turn to me like do, have we seen them before I'm like no i don't even know who these people are <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah so but i i think it's a good approach because yeah. it, it it disarms people mm-hmm. um and so and then you know everybody laughs and then it's comfortable so anyway this happened with this guy and you know, he was happy that we had came up to him because he was like, you know, I just I don't want to, you know, be too forward or anything like that. But I just want to say that um, you look very nice. And I was like, oh, you know, thank you. Of course. You were looking um, very scrumptious that night. My titties though. were out. That's, my that's gosh. all that was. Yes. You were very <laughs> sexy. I was serving a buffet of titties. That's buffet all that was. of titties. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I was like, oh, you know, thank you so much. And then, um, you know, we started having a, a little bit of a conversation, you know, just asking about him and his partner and them being in the lifestyle and those kind of things. And then I just get this weird vibe and he starts saying stuff like, you know, I just I, I can't talk to you too much. And I was like, and the mama was standing right next to me. And I was like, well, well, no, it's okay. And, oh, and I think you went, that's what happened. So we started bathroom. the conversation and then you were like, I'll be right back. I need to go to the bathroom. Um, and so we're, you know, we're talking. And he was like, I just, I don't want to talk to you too much. And I was like, I thought he was concerned about you. I thought he was concerned about, you know, him talking to me while you weren't there. And so I was like, oh, no, he's fine. You know, don't worry about that you know we're good you can talk to me you can you know say whatever you want you say I'm beautiful you say you want to suck on my titties you know you might can't do that but you can say it you know (laughs) (laughs) um but we're we're fine and he was like well no it's really my girl and by this point she had left she had gone she had her back turned so she she was at the bar she was at the bar and she had our back turned to us. We were like standing behind her, the three of us, so him, the bomber, and myself. Um, and she had our back turned to us the whole time. She turned around once, just her head, to see who he was talking to. But she never turned around to engage the conversation. And then... It was very rude. It was, it was very rude. And then she left mm-hmm. and went to another table to talk to another group of people. Right. And so he starts talking about, well, you know, my girl is really about her. Like, you know, she'll, you know, she likes girls and she'll pick the girl and bring her back or whatever. But I can't really, you know, talk to anybody, you know, for too long or engage anybody or look too interested anybody too long. And I was like, the fuck? Like, <laughs> nigga, why are you here then? Like, <laughs> I was like, that's, and I said, I was like, that's not fair. That's not how this works. Um, and so at that point, of course, the bomber was like, all right, well, fuck this. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> and we were like, well, you know, it's nice to meet you. We were, once we were, he said all that, we were like, okay, we don't, this is too much. This is not our vibe. Um, so, and it wasn't even that we weren't even interested in playing with them. Not at it all. was just, we wanted to try to introduce ourselves and meet everybody at the party. Um, so yeah, so we ended up, you know, just kind of leaving that conversation, but like that really bothered me. Like, why are you, why are you bringing your man out here, but he can't do shit? Like y'all are, if if that's the case, come out here as a single woman. Right. Like come as a single female. Why is he here? Like, is this, is he just like a beard? Is he just posing with you so y'all can look like a couple? Well, he might've been just paying for her drinks. Or yeah, or that, you know, but it's like. If you're going to be, and I mean, different things work for different couples. I definitely understand that. But just the fact that he didn't feel comfortable talking to me, Mm -hmm. you know, and every couple has their rules. Right. But this is a social environment. If you can't, if you are so distrustworthy that your partner can't talk to another female for too long, y'all don't need to be in this. Yeah. Okay, because we talk about fucking other people, (laughs) but we can't even have a hold a conversation like everybody had their clothes on. Like we weren't even like, you know how, you know, people can touch each other while you're in conversation, you know, put a hand on the shoulder. That was not going. None of that was happening. There were not there was no flirtation. It was literally I mean, I guess saying I'm pretty is flirtation. But anyway, 
but it's still it's like why 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 are you here yeah i what? don't understand that i don't understand and it just it made me lit- it made me upset and especially for her to be that rude because even if she wasn't interested in us she could you, have at least greeted she could have at least greeted us and introduced herself mm-hmm. like no now i had a theory about this whole thing what's your theory that you were too pretty oh anyway <laughs> uh, yo sometimes yo man you don't know what could be going on in these chicks head like if you i guarantee you if you were ugly she would have she would have just like turned around and been all right she would have <laughs> been you know she would have probably engaged us but she was like oh no honey uh-uh i i cannot even take the chance still still to my point if your relationship is so fragile that it is threatened by a beautiful woman no this is not for you figure out something else but both y'all don't need to be here yeah yeah i mean you know you, you, you again so so that was a theory i had that that you were too pretty the other thing that you know we don't know we don't know this couple's history right we don't know so that, yeah. there could have literally been a time where she turned around <laughs> and engaged the conversation and this dude just disappeared with the chick. Uh-huh. Yeah, right? That could have yeah. happened. Yeah, we don't yeah. know. So there might have been there might have been some PTSD going on there. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Um but but no, I, I agree with you. If that had been the case, then the the question would be is is this really something we should be doing? Right. Um so Anyway, I, th- I found it interesting that she walked away. She walked to another table um, with uh, with another couple, and he did not join her. Yeah, uh, he she, did. He was still talking. She had to been us. trying to um, signal him over, um, but he just he just wasn't listening. <laughs> it was just it was just interesting. Like I, I feel like there was a point at which he was done as well. And yeah, and I was like, like they didn't have to talk to us, but it's just common courtesy. Right, like like outside in the vanilla world, yeah. what she did was pretty damn rude. Right. I don't care where it was coming from. Exactly. So there was one other thing about that meet and greet. I just I just wanna wanted to mention because this this really irks me too. <laughs> um, you know, shout out to the couples who show up to these things on time because <laughs> because you see. Like the bell was saying, like I, you know, I have a particular like skill and approach mm-hmm. when it comes to these kinds of events and I'm using it constantly. Like yeah. I'm, I'm constantly like thinking about like ways to engage folks. I've been doing this for years, um, not in the lifestyle, but just, you know, in terms of just personally and professionally. Mm-hmm. So, but I have my limit. Like I can do that for a good three or four hours. Mm hmm. And after that, like it's 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 over. Like I become more similar to the chick you were just talking about, right. where it's like I I could probably chuckle at a few jokes and I could just, you know, ask you a few questions, but I'm probably gonna have a hard time listening to you after a while. And you know what the I funny tuck her thing out. is is like I think it's the reverse for us. Like you're you're really hot in the beginning and then you wane towards the end of the evening and I get better at mm-hmm. being social as the evening goes on. Yes. Like I'm, I'm very disengaged early on. Yeah. Now that you say that, but yeah. as the, in, as we get towards the end, low, you know, later in the evening, I'm, you know, very social. What's up with that? It. Is it just like a comfort level with you or something? Or? Yeah. It just takes me, it takes me time. Like I cannot, like, like, you know, I don't like if it's a cold pool, I can't jump in. I have to ease in. Uh, yeah. It's the same with like social. In. Yeah, you just jump in. Mm-hmm. And then after a while, you're just done. And I just got in the pool because it took me 20 minutes to like get my get into my ways <laughs> because <laughs> I'm not jumping in. Um, wow, that's so, really so interesting. I, I think it's a, a lot like that. Um, and it's just our per- personalities. Like, you know, you're psyched for the night. You're ready. You got all your <laughs> one-liners and, you know, introductions lined up. Um, and me, it's just like, okay, I don't know these people. <laughs> like, right. I, I got to talk to somebody. All right. I don't want to be here looking awkward. He over here just chatting away at folks <laughs> and right. so it just it just takes me more time so that was not in our show notes i just discovered we just discovered this yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> this live live ladies and gentlemen um 
So, okay. So this explains a lot. Because at the meet and greet, right? So granted, the meet and greet started at like seven. Yes, it did. It is now like one o'clock in the morning. <laughs> yes. So my like my hourglass is done. Like I'm <laughs> I'm out. And we are literally walking towards the exit. Like I have my coat on and everything. And I don't even know what happened. I feel like I went to the bathroom or I went to get some water or something. And you are just <laughs> giggling it up with this guy <laughs> who's just like I mean, he he should be a comedian because he's yeah. sort of like he he's just I I can't imagine him serious. His timing but, is is very good. Yeah, because um, he introduced himself as Michael Jordan, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, wait, what? <laughs> and you don't know if he's joking, like I right, could, I, like I, I didn't he, have yeah, the he, energy to figure this out. Yeah, he was just so serious with it. And he was he, like, he started to talk about Scottie Pippen. And I was just like being in Chicago. And I was like, wait, no, nigga, I know you're not Michael Jordan. Like, what? I was like, what's happening here? But. So, so, yeah, this couple, first of all, they, they were pretty hot. They were with yes. a single guy. Mm-hmm. Um, but they were a pretty hot couple. And like, you're giggling it up with him. And it's yeah. just, it's just distracting me so much <laughs> because I'm just like, Okay, we were about to go, but I don't, I don't want to get in the way of this. Like, whatever's <laughs> going on there, like you, you just because you like to laugh, like yes. you like a guy who can make you laugh wins. Like it's at the end of the, the end of the night. This guy is like, like charming you, like char- yes. charming those panties off, mm-hmm. and I'm like, like talking to his wife, but I'm like, yo, my skill level, my social skill level is at like, uh, like at thirty <laughs> percent. And she's talking to me and telling me all these interesting things. And I'm like, I can't even focus on what she's saying right now because I'm so tired. Um, but and my flirt game at that point was on 100. Yeah. Like I had something for everything he was saying. I had, you know, the like touches, like mm-hmm. the eye contact. I was I was on it. I was yeah. on my game. No, I, I, I saw it. Yeah. And so I was I just I did not want. So I was I was trying to engage his wife in conversation so it didn't <laughs> make it look like I wanted to leave. She was attractive and I really want to yeah. see this couple again. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just like I, I, I was I was kind of tight. I was like, where were y'all motherfuckers like? <laughs> Like at least like two hours ago. Maybe you didn't have to get there at seven. Could you have gotten there at eleven? Um, so anyway, we didn't end up playing with that couple because party was over. It was snowing. We had to go. Yo, man, fuck this snow. <laughs> Let's, let me just say that. If I can march this shit, if I can march snow into the woods, make and it dig it. its own grave, <laughs> make it make it dig its own grave and shoot it. I would, but I can't. Um so anyway, because we, I would, I would have considered getting a hotel room just to have them in it. We have already talked about some of these at length, but it's the eight signs that you are ready for the lifestyle. So I put these together. The number one sign is communication is solid, honest, and clear. So we, um, so I put this these these signs together because of the questions we've been getting and because of um, you know I think a lot of our listeners are sort of wondering when they're ready and these are some 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 good signs that you might be ready so if your communication is solid and honest and clear it means a couple of things one you're ready to talk about your rules you're ready to talk about what you like and don't like um uh you may be able to talk about what you want to do um what you have done and um what um and in some cases what you're doing right now um (laughs) And you both you both are able to communicate the whys of this, um, which is really important. Um, and you're able to talk about sex. You know, when you're applying for a job, what's the the, the, the most consistent like skill people are looking for is the ability to communicate. Right. Yes. Clearly. Mm-hmm. Um, and it just sort of tells you that there's a lot of people out there. Like they might be able to listen, but they're not really good at articulating themselves, not really good at communicating. Like this isn't a skill that you just have. Um, and so I think that for those who haven't necessarily, I mean, you know, I think we're both in professions that require us to know how to communicate um, very clearly. Some people aren't. Um, and some people need to pick up a book or 
listen to some audio books or some podcasts about maybe knowing that's how to communicate. Something you should put together for our listeners. Oh boy, putting on more ideas in my head. I know. Okay. Just a recommended, and because it, it's not about just like you said, it's not about. Um, you know, meeting people in the lifestyle or communicating with your partner about the lifestyle. It's just communication in general. Mm -hmm. I probably need to read some of these books, but mm, maybe. Um, <laughs> but um, I think you, you 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 have no problems with communication. I don't have problems with communication. I'm can I can still be very awkward in social situations though. <laughs> oh, you're talking about like being like charming yeah. and witty and stuff. Okay, that's a different Which I thing. can be. Yeah. It just takes me time. Right. You you're you're charming and witty after like midnight. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> but with you it's just a comfort level. It's not a yeah. skill thing. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. So yeah, so I I I can't I, I wouldn't I wouldn't know the first thing about like I mean, what it is that you can do to make yourself comfortable besides just con con consistently putting yourself in awkward situations to the point where it doesn't impact you, your yeah. skill. Um, okay, but yeah, maybe I will have an episode on that. Good idea, Bill. You're welcome. All right, so the other thing was to be secure in both yourself and your relationship. So I talked about this before. and It's so important. Right. So I am not concerned that you will leave me. And I'm not concerned that you will leave me. Okay, so. Because I'm going to find you. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm cutting everybody. <laughs> Somebody going to jail. <laughs> yeah. It might be you. It might be me. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But no, you can't leave me. Yeah. No, if you try to run away with, if you try to run away with someone without telling me, I'm going to find both of y'all. <laughs> I'm not going to kill you. So I'm not, I'm not, I will not have a problem going to prison. Uh -huh. I'm not going to kill you, but I'm going to blow. I'm not going to kill him either, but I'm going to make sure that I injure him in such a way that he will not be able to fuck anymore. <laughs> so, so then when I'm in prison and I can't fuck bitches, I'm going to be like, well, you can't, can't fuck, fuck bitches, bitches either. either. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there's that. Uh, mm -hmm. so just so you know, you just, you know, you can run away with another nigga. You just got to let me know and then nobody will get hurt. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but anyway, so remember, it's like, it's like the concern. It's always a possibility. I mean, who knows what might happen in a relationship, but just if that's a concern in your head, like a real concern, like something that you worry about, um, then no. But if it's, if you're really secure in yourself and your relationship, um, then, you know, things like jealousy things like you know this real concern that that sort of drives people away from from the lifestyle it's not something that'll impact you now again i think this is something that can change over time like mm -hmm. right now you can feel secure something might happen in your relationship where you might not feel as secure so um if you know you discover your partner was having an affair or you discover that uh you um or, you know, you, something happens to you and, you know, you become disfigured or you right. you can't necessarily meet your partner's le needs like you were, or you just got unemployed. Like, like that can affect your degree of security um, in your relationship, in which case you may not, you might want to take a step back from the lifestyle and, and, and think about a few things if that's happening. Um, so that's, so that's, that was number two. So if you're secure, really can secure in both yourself and your relationship, sometimes this takes time to, it takes time to get to that place. That's why I recommend for folks who aren't in the lifestyle, um, to build a foundation before they, they get into this shit. Um, it's, that's, that's important. It's about building that security. Now, some people we're meeting couples increasingly that have actually met in the lifestyle mm -hmm. and that's a different beast. So yes. this, these don't apply to them. Um, all right. So number three is you respect the sexuality of yourself and your partner. So I get this, when I think about this, I'm thinking about couples where you are couples where one partner is okay when the other partner is attracted to some other people or there's something particularly that another partner did that they liked that they might not necessarily be doing right now mm -hmm. with you. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I think a lot about an like anal sex with you mm -hmm. not happening. Nope. I like it. 
um, mm-hmm. but you're not giving it up, giving it up to me. Mm-hmm. Um, but there are other women out there that will. That's right. There, there are. Um, and the thing was, the thing is, can you separate your partner's sexuality from yourself? Like, can you separate the degree to which they're satisfied with certain things from yourself? Mm -hmm. Can you respect their sexuality as this thing that has nothing to do with you? Yeah. I'm so happy that you enjoy anal, but you will still never get it from me. (laughs) And and I'm okay. Like, and I'm so okay with that. Like, even before we were in the lifestyle, like, we would joke about that. And it's kind of like our running joke in our relationship, like... We'll be like, we'll bet on something and you'll be like, oh, well, if you lose, you're giving me anal. And I'm like, no. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and But it was even a joke before. I was like, well, if you find somebody else that'll let you stick the, your dick up their ass, then go ahead for it. This was pre-lifestyle. Right. Like, that would be okay. I was like, you couldn't, you couldn't um, kiss her. Yeah, we had rules around that, yeah, though. Yeah, you couldn't have sex with her, but get, do anal. I could stick it up the butt. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um. So, so uh, there's a couple of things that this makes me think of. So let's say, cause I'm like, like I'm a pretty, like fairly slender. I don't know if I, I, sometimes I look in the mirror and I see different things depending <laughs> on what slender. time of day it is. So I'm slender, right? So w- am I comfortable with the possibility that you might like really muscular guys Mm -hmm. and you might want to get picked up and you know slammed against the wall and like you know thrust it against um so i'm not super muscular and i'm not gonna slam you against (laughs) i'm not doing all of that shit um but i'm totally okay with you liking that and 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 being like and just accepting that i'm just not going to be the one doing that see it's Mm -hmm. just this idea that there's this there, there are these sexual desires you have that have nothing to do with me. Right. right. And I, I think that's the whole, like, expectations piece, mm-hmm. right? So you just, expecting your partner to be and do everything for you and fulfill every need and desire and role in your life is just unrealistic um, and detrimental to the relationship. Mm-hmm. And you know, understanding that there are needs and desires that you have that may not be, be able to be filled Mm -hmm. by your partner. Mm -hmm. It's okay. That's okay. Like they, they, they're just one person and they cannot do and be everything. That's right. If you want DP, your man ain't got two dicks. (laughs) I mean, unless, you know, <laughs> some medical anomaly, I, I'm so, not oh my gosh. met a guy with two dicks. I just, <laughs> right. I haven't seen that before. And frankly, like, yeah, you could use a dildo, but a dildo just never matches up to a real dick. Mm-hmm. So it's like, you know, how can you, how can you expect your, I mean, that's an extreme example, yeah. but... But I've, I've I've met a lot of girls who who would like two guys. Yeah. They, they, they you know they but they wouldn't tell that to their man though. Right. Like you know what I'm saying. That's that's what I mean about respecting the sexuality of your. And partner. it doesn't mean that your your partner is inadequate or less than Absolutely or not, yeah. anything, uh, anything of that nature. Um, it's it's not about that. They are still you know wholly a full person that you love and care about and want to be engaged in. And then there are uh, these other things that you want too. Mm-hmm. Um, and it doesn't mean that you know you want to be with that person necessarily. You start getting talking into poly. That's something different. Um, but just speaking specifically about swinging and sexual desire, you know. Right. If if your partner wants to have sex with someone other than you it does not mean that you know you're not adequate enough that's right exactly because we have great sex we have really good sex yeah i mean like you was doing a whole lot last night Yeah, we'll get to that oh okay (laughs) (laughs) but um you know we we have great sex but the sex like we said the sex that we have with other people um is good too and it's just in addition to, mm-hmm. you know, right, and it if it, it fills those gaps, um, those sexual desires that you know we just can't fill, right, which it's is the- okay. I'm totally okay with not giving you anal, right, <laughs> right. I mean, you know, and I, and I think the whole so 
so just outside of like the just the the sex part of it right just the desire to be wanted by another person other than your partner mm-hmm. right again has not has little to do with your partner everything to do with like being sexually and lustfully wanted by another person um can you be comfortable with your partner's desire for that kind of thing because that's a desire we both have and i think in many ways it's an it's an innately human desire mm-hmm. um because it all it ultimately validates us and, and and makes us feel valued as as flawed as that might be sometimes that's that feeling is very real um Okay, moving on to number four. Um, you find enjoyment seeing or hearing about other people have sex. So yeah. have you ever met someone who, and, and, and like parents don't count because I think for them it's more so they don't feel comfortable having sex, I mean, having conversations about sex with their children, right? Or or with some family members. I'm trying but to figure out where you're going with it. <laughs> have you ever met somebody who was uncomfortable talking or hearing about sex, like a peer? Yeah, but I think it's because they're more conservative, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that that's and prude, right? Prude and conservative. If you're in this bucket, lifestyle is going to be difficult for you. So that that was an easy one. I just, I haven't. I mean, for some reason, and I don't know. I don't know why this is true, Bell. But when I have conversations with people, I can I can get the conversation to sex really quickly. You can. Um, I told you some conversation books, the communication. Well, books. there, well, there's that, uh, there's that. Um, but that was an easy one. So, um, if you're not comfortable seeing or hearing about it, then, eh, you know, find something else to do. Um, number five, you're, uh, you're resistant to drama, um, yes. or, or you know how to handle it. No mo drama. Yeah. I mean, but we don't have drama. Yeah. But those, there's some well, couples out there. That's that, not exactly true. Every couple has arguments and some kind of drama. No couple is perfect. Um, yeah, but, but not but not like that couple had drama at that Halloween party. No, that's, we that's don't the kind be of starting drama fights I'm about. and like leaving each other mm-hmm. <laughs> in places and stuff like that. Like if you get so upset with each other, like in public, like you're screaming at each other, yeah, mm-hmm. like you throwing you throwing shit at each other, like nah, nah, son. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. But if you're a couple who can handle these problems, or at least like wait till you wait till you get home with your bullshit, right? Or yeah, in the in the car, like. But you know, if we gonna have an issue, we gonna talk about it. But we're not gonna talk about it in front of everybody. Yeah, yeah. No, we're not, because we we've had some issues. We've had some issues we had to talk about in the car. Mm-hmm. Um. Uh, the number six is you and your partner hide very little from each other, so it's about just being open and honest about your feelings. Yes. Uh, it's a good sign that you're ready for this and you're you're in relationships that's mature enough. Yeah. Um, so we definitely talk about if, you know, if there is something in the situation that we didn't like or even um, or that we just weren't comfortable with. Like there was necessarily a situation, um, but there was an encounter, I would say, uh, last night with a couple that you weren't sure how it started. So like you stopped everything. Mm-hmm. just to get some context which was fine mm-hmm. um and so and then w- later in the car you were like i just need to understand like how did all of that happen <laughs> yeah um you know and stuff like that and so and i explained you know that it wasn't just like random dude i mean he was new they were new to us but like i had had an engagement or conversation with them before and you were playing with somebody else so like yep. it wasn't just, but we were comfortable. You were comfortable sharing that you were uncomfortable about the situation right. and getting clarity about it. And I was comfortable sharing with you, you know, where that came from and all that kind of stuff. Right. Right. Um, sometimes I think we're, uh, we are hesitant in sharing things with our partner because um, one, we are worried about how they're going to respond right so there's sometimes that's something that stops us from from sharing certain things but i think on uh i think what people tend to talk less about is the things that we're afraid to share with our partners because we might not feel that 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 feeling that we had is valid um 
So I'm trying to see if I can come up with an example. So for, for example, if I was like blazing some chick out in the mm-hmm. playroom, right? And you were getting blazed out by another guy, mm-hmm. right? And maybe you getting blazed out for, by another guy um, made me feel jealous. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking to myself, well, how can I get, how can I feel jealous about that? Because I was just, I was blazing another chick out. So, right. so I might be hesitant to share how I'm feeling because in my mind, it's not valid. Right. I'm saying that you should feel comfortable sharing those feelings anyway. Mm-hmm. And if you feel that, you know, they were contradictory, share that shit too. Yeah. Right. Um, it's about not, you know, not hiding these things because they can, they can fester yeah. um, if we, if we hide them. Uh, number seven, I'll move on quickly to, to the last two. Um, you are confident that your relationship can handle a fuck up. Because mm-hmm. they will happen. Yeah. And um, so you have to know that you're you're you all would be able to recover, um, you know, and build or rebuild from there. Right. Um. Yeah, definitely. You know, I heard a quote from somebody uh, saying something like, "If you are willing to get a divorce." because your partner fucked up um and messed around on you or something like that if 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 that is a divorceable offense for you then don't get married Mm. it was so simple but when i heard it i was like huh Mm -hmm. how many people are saying that in like you know premarital counseling like making statements like that like if that's a divorceable offense don't bother getting married don't waste your time um i really i really liked that because i bet the person who said that was was in the lifestyle (laughs) (laughs) um i mean but that leaves you know it really leaves no room for error um you know when you say like you know this can never happen Mm -hmm. you know this if you do this it's over now we're not talking about repeat offenders right Right. because that's something else Mm -hmm. um but because then it's not just about the it's not just about stepping out of the relationship it's literally about abuse yeah at that point but it's like um we're human we're human beings we are emotional um people and you know when you just stuff happens and you get connected to people that you didn't think it would happen and people make mistakes um and so it's like are you gonna be like jesus what would jesus do (laughs) (laughs) jesus would forgive yeah (laughs) and if jesus can't forgive that person why can't you Mm -hmm. see whenever somebody tells me yo don't you want to be like Jesus? I'd be like, well, actually, no, Jesus got nailed to a cross and died a really, <laughs> really painful death. I want to not follow that path. All right. He was cool before that. <laughs> but let's let's keep it real. Like uh, being Jesus was didn't work out for Jesus. <laughs> um, so shout out to Jesus. Shout out to Jesus. <laughs> right. All right. Um, so the last sign that you might be ready um, for the lifestyle is that uh, compersion comes natural. So, And what the fuck is compersion? All right. So compersion um, was something I learned from, um, from a single female in the lifestyle who's also a, uh, who's also poly. Mm-hmm. Um, and she had introduced the c- comment to me, uh, or the term to me, and it's basically the concept of feeling joy when one has experienced another's joy. So mm. it's, you know, it's so it could be associated with a number of things, but I think in the lifestyle, it's more so the, the feeling of joy associated with seeing a loved one enjoy another person. Mm-hmm. Um, so this is probably more consistent in the poly world because yeah. it's sort of like, can you be happy with your partner if they fall in love with someone else other than you? Right. Can you be happy for them for that? I don't know about that shit, but I like <laughs> seeing you when you really fucking somebody. Like when you're when you're fucking somebody well, I enjoy seeing that. 
falling in love that's that's on some other shit but Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like when you're putting on a show yeah i enjoy that yeah no i and i i I like i like i like when i'm able to tell another man has given you an orgasm Mm -hmm. um because number one it tells me Okay, you're not in pain. You're fine. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't have to worry pain. about your safety right now. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, but it also says you're satisfied. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think one thing I learned from the lifestyle is when we go to an event and you're not satisfied, or there's something that's like making you unhappy, even if I'm like enjoying myself, oh, you um, are not happy. It makes it very difficult for like I never want to go to that event again. <laughs> um, you know, it's just it it it's not fun for me. Um, so compersion comes natural to you. You, you are, you are overjoyed when your partner is experiencing joy with someone that's not you. Okay. If that's something that comes natural to you, you might be ready for this shit. You just might be. Yep. And those are our eight signs that you might be ready for the lifestyle. Now, does it sound like we did this episode before? Now that we've now that we've done the topic, does it sound like we did it before? Not as much. Not not as in depth. Exactly. Not as in depth. Mm-hmm. So talk to your partners. Get your communication right. Get your relationship right. And then see where you can go from there. Yes. Um so remember, I'm actually going to list these in the show notes. Um, at some point, I'll probably put together a survey. <laughs> a survey? Yeah, a survey. A survey. Uh, assessing the degree of readiness for lifestyle. Oh. Right. Oh, you mean like a quiz? Yeah, a quiz. Mm-hmm. What did I say? A survey. Oh, right. That's right. That's different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like a test, an assessment. Um, shoot, you made me say, you made me, oh yeah. Uh, the other thing I was going to say is, these are just signs that you might be ready for the lifestyle, but like, you know, being ready for like soft swapping and full swapping are totally different things. Um, I think we might have talked more about that. Yeah. Like, like how, you know, you're ready for a full swap. We might have gone into that a little bit, but but this was more general. Okay. So um, if there are any signs that we missed, please email them to blackandkinkylifestyle at gmail.com. Tweet them to us. Um, holler at us, us on Black and DM Kinky. DM us. Yes. Um, oh, we're also on Instagram. Getting a hell of a lot of followers. Shout out to our Instagram yes, followers. Shout out to the Instagram peeps. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna be posting more on there. I'm I'm trying to get get it together. Get a rhythm. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah. Slide slide into them DMs, people. We yeah. love we love uh, we love answering slide these questions. Um, so now that we're done for today with with today's topic, let's talk about our sticky pages, son. Oh, sticky pages. Yes. Now, sticky pages. So, um, shout out to Alluring Temptations. Yeah. For hosting an exquisite party at the Shadows. It was quite nice. It was absolutely fantastic. The the crowd was was nice the crowd was very the crowd diverse was really good mm-hmm. um you know shout out to the photographer that was on premises oh yeah he was nice too um he was just really a charming guy yeah he was <laughs> um um shout out to the folks who got the shrimp cocktails out because i enjoyed those quite a bit <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the they cupcakes were, p- were good too. Yeah, they were playing some interesting porn at Shadows last night as I well. Know one looked like it looked like a um, shaving commercial, but then you saw the girls' titties. And then you saw the girls' titties. And that I was, was like, hilarious. wait, what is what is happening here? And like, then he got in the shower like with his towel on. I was like, the fuck? <laughs> it was weird. But it was actually quite a charming porn. Like it was different because this was a married couple, right? Right. So. Here she is taking a shower, and he's in the bathroom mm-hmm. shaving, and it's just it's the kind of yeah, scenario like she, that she kisses him and she gets shaving cream on her face, on her nose, or whatever. She's like, oh wait, no, and then yeah, yeah. it was it was a very <laughs> like this. It was kind. Of, I feel like it was porn that was meant for women, maybe. Yo, oh. yeah, I think it was it was women female friendly porn, which yeah, I watch that kind of porn. I'm actually starting to appreciate that kind of porn. I have—I don't think I've admitted this to you. No. Um, 
and the reason why i like the um female centered por- like i don't like the female centered porn much when they get to the sex at that point mm. i want i want like the hardcore stuff yeah. but the female centered porn really does amp up the tension building they spend mm-hmm. a lot more time and it's not just oral or anal it's just they know how to film the touches they know how to film the re- the reactions and responses mm-hmm. they know how to make both partners really look like they want to fuck each other really badly mm-hmm. and that's why i like those those porns better because if I'm watching a porn and it looks like the girl is just she's just waiting for her check <laughs> and, and she's doing all these like Cut really the weird and extravagant Cut moans for no reason uh-huh. um, I, it just takes me out of it and I'm like bitch you're not enjoying this shit like come on man earn your money like fucking like, act, your act, act your part man do your fucking job <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so anyway uh, yeah they were playing interesting porn there really crowded very diverse a lot of our people in there um, we saw the blacks again. Yes, we had a very good time with the blacks. We had it was like a, a reunion. Yeah, it was like the interesting uh, that like uh, they might have heard our episode where we described them as our number one experience of 2018, and they were like, "Well, it's 2019 now, so <laughs> <laughs> let's get we, it we try, in." We're trying to make it on that list again, mm-hmm. uh, but they might just <laughs> <laughs> they might just make it on that list because <laughs> that shit was fucking epic last night. Mr. Black fucked me across the bed twice. Across the motherfucking wait, how did he? So did y'all like? So when you said twice, because she said this to me in the car. <laughs> and I was like, so when he fucked you across the bed the first time, was it like a typewriter where you just sort of slid back to the other end of the bed and just did it again? Or? Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, because because Mrs. Black definitely squirted in my face. Oh, all and, in your face. And and then she squirted again. I was outside of the splash zone yeah. this time. So I didn't yeah, we splashed. had our own bed. I think we learned yeah. this time that <laughs> it wasn't a good idea to, to be fucking around people. Um, but and we know. were being watched. Apparently, we were always being watched. So I don't want to get nobody in trouble. No. <laughs> <laughs> but somebody. Somebody was apparently masturbating to us and the blacks mm. playing together. Yeah. That shouldn't have been doing that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we are very flattered. Yeah. We are. Um, I mean, that has to be like a workplace hazard. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> um, if you work at a place like that. So... Yeah, honestly. Um, but if if you were, I mean, if you were working at the Shadows last night, um, it was, a, very it was a good night for you. Especially you, if you were in that playroom. That playroom was popping. Um, so, Belle, I'm going to let you describe. So, I think we talked about the blacks, but yeah. can you describe our... Because we had some playtime together. We did have some playtime together. Um, and we had our own little bed and I don't, know, I don't know like sometimes like I don't know if it's just a sexy environment or I, you just watch the recent porn or something but sometimes like you just get in this mode like this beast mode and I'm like who is this person not that our sex on a regular basis isn't good or intense but like sometimes it just be super intense and like you be like grabbing my hair and you know just pulling on me and like it's just very intense and in the moment like one of those things where um it's like no one you know uh, everybody else in the room goes away like and we're just so engrossed in each other um Mm -hmm. yeah (laughs) yeah so what what was i doing that that i don't normally do um like you were like grabbing my throat and my hair at the same time like pulling my hair and grabbing my throat and do like very um, deep passionate kisses um, I think you were you know fucking doggy style and like for a long time and just like hard pounding like the whole time um, and then my arms got tired and I was like shit and then I had to <laughs> like <laughs> Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, rest on my elbows. You know, that and of course when you do that, like it makes it deeper, mm-hmm. right? 
Um, so then it was like even deeper thrusting. And, mm-hmm. yeah, it was very sexy. Yeah, there were, uh, I think the blacks were playing with another couple on our right. Um, and I, I'm i not sure if we were distracting them, but I know somebody. I know, because they were like, you know, they were doing their thing. and They were very quiet and sensual. Yeah, it was, it, yeah, yeah. It was like the sensual storm. <laughs> yeah, like, it was like that. And we were like, we were fucking. <laughs> Loud and hardcore. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, because yeah. you were riding me at one point. Oh, yeah, I was riding you. And, like, I was bouncing up and down, titties bouncing everywhere. Titties were bouncing, mm-hmm. like, I, so, because I was enjoying the view. So yeah. I was, like, while you were riding me, I'm like, holy shit, this is sexy as hell. Because you, you had on a <laughs> sexy ass outfit last, like, like, it was a horse outfit. So I was, just, it was, it was hooker chic. Yes. Yes. It was like I was a high priced hooker. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, nah, you, you'd be charging you, like a thousand. Yeah, you gotta yeah, you gotta pay a thousand. You'd be a Vegas whore. Yeah. So I was definitely a high class hooker. Mm-hmm. You'd have a website and everything. Mm-hmm. It's like exclusive, you know. You are not clientele. you you would not be one of them Craigslist bitches. Nah, hell no. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> um so one thing I want you to remember is your dress did not come off last night. No, I I didn't even change my clothes. Yeah. Like I brought lingerie to wear, mm-hmm. and I sure did not put it on. Nope, because what you had on was good enough. <laughs> you know, because um, yeah, while you were bouncing on me, the dress was still on, but your titties were out. Like I I just opened your shit up and just pulled the titties out, yeah. and you were just bouncing up and down. There was one point where you were making some serious altitude. Yeah, I was pretty high. Yeah. Like, I was bouncing. I had some lift. I had some good lift. <laughs> yeah, very good lift. And I know people were looking at that shit. Oh, yeah. oh I know they, you know, I saw them. Yeah, they okay. were looking. You, you, had a, yeah, yeah. you had a view of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the folks across the room were looking yeah. over. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, um, and see, then I arched my back. And so it was like, yeah, hitting bouncing with the arch back. It's a good, it's a good view. Yeah, um, and we were we were fucking for a while. It was very hard, very intense. And when I busted my nut, it was it was loud. Like I sounded like Lex. <laughs> I had one of those like Lex Steel moments. Um, and that was that was awesome. So yeah, I think after that we sat down. Um, oh yeah, then we just watched for a little while. Oh oh oh! Tell them about the couple. <laughs> Tell him about the couple, the the old the older guy. He looked like he had to be at least fifty, and the younger girl, the white couple. Yep. Mm-hmm. Oh, he was fucking her for a good ninety minutes. Had to because they started before us. Yep. And then we sat down and watched them finish. And they put on a great show. They did. I mean, and he this, was he was mm. fucking her. Yeah, they were. They, there was no love making happening oh, there. No. Um, and then, like our Mrs. Black, <laughs> she's so I love her. Um, she starts. Oh, she was just rubbing on a girl, and then the girl was like, "Sit on my face." I'm like, that I was escalated like, quickly. I was, yeah, I was like, "Oh, <laughs> okay, this is about to get real interesting." <laughs> mm-hmm. um, but by that time, you know, the guy had been fucking her for ninety minutes, so he took a break. Yeah. Uh, and then Mr. Black came in. And then and Mr. Black, aka the over. Hammer. The Hammer. <laughs> Um, okay, but it's like over. <laughs> and I think I think she got hammered out. And then I think that's when I looked at the blacks. I looked at us. I yeah. looked at my dick. <laughs> and then I was like, um, Belle, is, is your pussy ready? <laughs> is, has, <laughs> is it ready is for another the round? Recovery time. Is the recovery time up? I was like, are, is this? Are we gonna make this a blacks night? Yeah. Are we gonna, are we gonna play with the blacks tonight? Are you like? Doesn't sound like a bad idea. Never a bad idea. And then, yeah. So we already told that story. It was fucking epic. But, oh, but then there was another couple. And we had met them earlier. They were in a racial couple. He was black. She was Latina. Um, older couple. And when I tell you, like, we talked about Dirty Talk last week. Oh, I didn't see this. This dude's dirty talk. And so, and it's not for everybody. It's not for everybody. But I was like, how he was talking to her and fucking her. I was like, I want to fuck him now. 
Like, <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> like, I want all of this that's happening right there. But he, like, had her bent over the side of the bed. Mm-hmm. And, like, he had, like, one leg up on the bed, one leg, you know, on the floor. Mm-hmm. So she's, like, doggy position kind right. of over the bed. And he was like, yeah, take that dick. Take that dick. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You better throw it back. It was just, like, it was oh, so. I love um, it. I don't know. It was it, I, it was just very sexy. Yeah. And he was like he was like looking at her. He was like looking at me, but talking to her. And then he smacked her ass. And I was like, hey. Was this the couple that was this the couple that that this, was this the Spanish girl that I was like salivating over? No. Uh-uh. Oh damn. Okay, because I <laughs> I wanted that girl. Yeah. All right, but okay. So so dirty talk. So so that's interesting because we were talking about dirty talk last episode, yeah. and I talked about commands mm-hmm. and simple ones. Take that dick is another really easy yeah, command. Yeah, it, was. it was. Um, And there were no assumptions there. No. She threw the, she threw the ass back. He said it. Mm-hmm. It happened. Mm-hmm. Um, he liked it, and he gave her that feedback. Mm-hmm. You know, there's <laughs> this so much. So now that you mention that, so there was something interesting you told me about Dirty Talk, and I think it was Dirty Talk that came from Mr. Black, mm-hmm. um, who hadn't even watched, I don't think he even listened to the episode no. before this came up. So no. it's... So, you told me there were certain things he was saying to you that was that was working for you, and I wanted to I wanted to hear a little bit of that. Yeah. So, like, and I think it's in contrast to you know some other dirty talk, but it's like again, context is key, and words are important. Words mean things. Um, so, how you say it is important. So, um, you know, saying stuff like you know, I'm so glad we got to play together, and you know, your pussy feels so good, and you know, I love how your pussy makes my dick feel, and you know, stuff like that. Because it's very, it's complimentary, mm-hmm. um, it's in the moment focused, mm-hmm. right? So instead of saying like, um, you, mi- I know you missed this dick, you're saying, I'm glad we got to play together. That's you know very in the moment. It's not an insu- it's not a uh, assumption. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's just appreciative of what's happening. So that you know, and it's makes about a the way he feels, right? Mm-hmm. And not making assumptions about you, right? Exactly. Even though there might be some assumptions in there, inherently, I'm glad we got to play together. Mm-hmm. Like you know, I'm glad. Mm-hmm. Right, right, I mean? right. Mm-hmm. Um, and that that can make that can make folks feel good. So, so it's 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 interesting that 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 came up um, for us again. Um, I think my favorite moment of the night is after me and Miss P- Mrs. Black got finished playing. We were just laughing. I don't know. It was, it was, I don't know if you heard us laughing. You I probably heard you yeah. no, I heard you we, There was no joke shared there. We weren't <laughs> like there wasn't like somebody told a joke or uh-huh. something funny happened. We we were just laughing because we were like, oh, that's this is exactly what happened. You know, I think the reason why it was funny to me is because I felt like we had been waiting to have to play like that for a while, mm-hmm. and we finally did, mm-hmm. and it was like. Oh, that was awesome! Yeah, and you know, I don't know. It was, it was just, it was just funny. We were just fucking laughing our asses off. Mm-hmm. Well. Cause um, they were our first swap since we like took a break. So again, shout out to the couples who show up to the motherfucking party on time. <laughs> so the bell had mentioned that there was this couple that I had asked her about in the car because after. So there was this um, there was this woman I was playing with mm-hmm. that I originally thought I was playing with as part of a, a, um, a threesome MFM threesome because mm-hmm. that's what she wanted to do, but the other guy just sort of disappeared, um, <laughs> and I was like, okay, well I guess we're doing this. She was into it, and so was I. So we fucking, and um, I was at that point after smashing. Bell, you know, playing with Mrs. Black, um, like, like my dick was like calling it in at that point. <laughs> um, and so me and Mrs. Black were over there for the assist. Yeah, so y'all were helping me out, talking dirty and kissing me and shit, and that was fucking sexy as shit. <laughs> um, so 
you know, she was riding me for a while, and then I was like, nah, I got, I got to take a break. This has just been too much tonight. <laughs> so um, then Mr. Black swooped in for the assist. Mr. Black swooped right in. Um, and then I looked over at you, and I think you were getting, like, fingered by this, you know, this, mm-hmm. this fairly good-looking older guy. Yeah. Uh, I like and, me some older men. Right. He looked like... <laughs> You know, in the dark, it just, to me, he looked like like a sexy black Santa Claus or something. He did, is yes. That what it is? Okay, it wasn't just me. <laughs> no, it was just you. <laughs> all right. He was sexy Santa. Uh, shout out to all the sexy Santas out there. <laughs> um, so he's, you know, he's he's fingering you, and I'm getting, like, like flashbacks from the last time yeah. I saw that shit happen. Um and we didn't, and you know. And it wasn't uh, consensual when it wasn't consensual. I should say. Right, it, or it, it was just it was just something that just did not fit. Mm-hmm. Uh, this time it fit. I just wasn't part of the initial interaction. So I was, you know, I was fine if Belle was fine with it, but I just I didn't know if she was fine with it because, mm-hmm. you know, some dudes as soon as they see a pussy, they just put a fucking finger in it, <laughs> um, without asking. So I wanted to make But you had two hands on your ass. I did. It was him and, and the partner hers. he was with. Yes. And so um, I just came over and started like, you know, I just, I don't, I don't remember what it was. I think I just touched her or something. Mm-hmm. And she just reciprocated it in this subtle way mm. that then we just all started touching each other. Mm-hmm. And then at and then I was like, no, I got I got to stop this at some point because I don't know where this is going. <laughs> right, because I was I was following your lead on that because um, I knew that you were already like kind of tired mm-hmm. um, and stuff like that, and so I didn't want to escalate things um, when I knew you were right not ready to play. Right, and so I I it was funny. This is classic classic fucking lifestyle shit. I I stop it. I'm like, all right, hold on, hold on. So who are you guys? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, and so we started talking and, you know, we started talking about, you know, where folks were from. And then we started talking about rules. But they had just got to the yeah. club at that point. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think he was sort of, he knew he was running out of time. Mm-hmm. Um, and he was just like, okay, so what are your rules? And I was like, okay, well, yeah, let's let's just get to the point here. Right. Um, and so we talked about rules and... Um, and I didn't want to go full swap with them. I was fine just soft swapping at yeah. that point. And so that's, that's oh, what, yeah, we that ended up soft swapping with them, which was good. It was still good. Um, yeah, it was, it was fun. She was, gosh, she was nice. She, she was just yeah, nice I knew to you touch. were going to like her. Yeah. Um, um, and so we would just like, um, you know, we just exchanged information and hopefully we'll be meeting up with them at some point in the near future. Mm-hmm. But yeah, if they came a little early, maybe things would have been different. That's all I'm saying. Um, so shout out to the folks who come on time. <laughs> again, um, you guys are appreciated. Yeah. So again, um, appreciate all the emails, DMs, um, holler at us. Keep them coming. And what's our next event? It's a meet and greet. Oh, no, it's We're friction. going to a hotel uh, takeover, Friction's Hotel Takeover in Richmond, yeah. um, which I don't think is sold out yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, we will be staying over the weekend. Yeah. Um, so if, um, yeah, folks are interested, um, yeah, Friction has a whole, like, uh, website where you have to sort of register and all that stuff. Um, and be approved by the administrators before you're allowed to attend one of these things. Um, and then we're, I think there's one room available for the more getaways, mm-hmm. cabin getaway. Yeah. Yeah. So if you want to go, there's December one 15th, room. Uh, December 5th, February, February 15th. February 15th, Valentine's Day weekend. Yep, that's right. Um, definitely get it in. And... If you're interested in going to Naughty in New Orleans, book as soon as possible because those rooms are get sold out um, soon as well. And and you can book through a more getaways for Naughty in New Orleans. Yeah, that's right. All right. So I think we've talked your ears off enough. Thanks for listening. And we'll look forward to seeing you in the next one. Peace. Bye.
Black and kinky, black and kinky, black and kinky lifestyle.